So you've probably heard of polygons, and maybe you know about polyhedra, but do you know about polytopes? Polytopes are basically just rigid shapes in higher dimensions. Those of us who live down here in the third dimension can't really imagine what it's like for there to be a four-dimensional or five-dimensional shape, but we can still do math with higher dimensional shapes. And you can use the same techniques that you use with polygons and polyhedra to figure out what kinds of high dimensional shapes even exist. So the most famous type of polygon is a regular polygon. I think they should be called perfect polygons, but I don't make the rules. And that just means a shape where all of the sides and angles are equal. And a nice thing about polygons is there's exactly one regular polygon for each number of sides. So there's a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, heptagon, octagon, and so on up to infinity. And that's actually not going to be true in higher dimensions. In fact, even when you get to the third dimension, there isn't one for every number of sides. But first I should tell you the rules for what counts as a regular polyhedron, a perfect polyhedron. All of the sides of a regular polyhedron have to be regular polygons and you have to use the same polygon every time, they have to be the same size, and the last rule is you have to have the same number meeting at each point. So let me show you what that looks like. The most famous regular polyhedron is probably the cube, and a cube is made out of squares, out of a perfect four-sided polygon, and there are six of them, you put three around each corner, so this satisfies all of the rules, this is a perfect regular polyhedron. Another pretty well-known one is the tetrahedron, some people just call this a pyramid, but make sure you're not confusing it with like an Egyptian pyramid, which has four triangle sides and a square bottom. A tetrahedron has three triangle sides and a triangle bottom. Now, a slightly less well-known one is the octahedron. And this one you get by taking two Egyptian pyramids, square pyramids, and stacking them on top of each other. So this has eight sides and they're all perfect triangles. Now's where it starts to get fun. The next one is the dodecahedron. <laughs> So if you can see what's going on here, there's actually 12 perfect pentagons all sort of clicking together with three around each corner. They wrap around to the back and the whole thing works out perfectly. And now there's actually only one more. There's one last regular polyhedron. It's called the icosahedron. This one has 20 sides and once again they're all perfect triangles. And there's no more. These are the only perfect polyhedra that you can make. How do we know these are the only ones? It's actually not that difficult to understand the reasoning here. As we said, you have to use one of these shapes. So if you're using a triangle, well if you put three triangles around a corner that gets you a tetrahedron, four around a corner gets you an octahedron, and five around a corner gets you an icosahedron. If you try to put six triangles around a corner, you can see that that's going to create a flat plane, like a perfect tiling of the plane. So that's not actually going to make you a closed shape like we want. And anything more than six, the same way, you're not even going to be able to fit them around a corner. So then you have to move up to square. Well, if you put three squares around a corner, that gets you a cube. And if you try to put four squares around a corner, once again, you have a perfect flat tiling of the plane. Move up again, pentagon, put three around a corner, that gets you a dodecahedron. And if you try to put four pentagons around a plane, they're too cramped, they're not even going to fit. And that's all you can do because once you move up to hexagon or above, even three hexagons around a corner is going to get you another perfect tiling of the plane. So these are our only options for three dimensions for polyhedra. Ready to move up a dimension? Polytope is the general word for any shape like this. And I think the word for a four-dimensional one is called a polychoron, but no one really uses that word. The classic example of a polychoron would be the hypercube, sometimes called a tesseract. How do we know what a four-dimensional shape is going to look like? We basically just follow a pattern that works for the previous dimensions. The only regular shape in the first dimension is just a straight line, and the only regular shape in the zeroth dimension is just a point. And now you might notice a pattern here. To create a line, you take two points, spread them out, and connect them. To create a square, you take two lines, spread them out in a different dimension, and connect them. To create a cube, you take two squares, spread them out in another new dimension, and connect them. So to create a hypercube, you take two cubes, spread them out in a fourth dimension which we don't have access to, and connect them. And I'm going to try to draw it, but you're going to see it's very confusing. You can't even really tell what I'm drawing. <music> This 
a kind of rough drawing, but even if I drew it really well, it would still be kind of confusing. The problem is this cube even isn't a real cube. It's a flattened projection of a cube into the second dimension. It's like if you took a wireframe cube and cast a light through it onto a piece of paper. And this here is a projection of a projection. Someone could try to make a 3D version of this shape, which would just be a wireframe cube and another wireframe cube connected. And even that would basically be a shadow onto the third dimension of an actual four dimensional hypercube. In any case, this is a hypercube or a tesseract. Its sides are cubes. And this is the first regular polychoron we found. Another one is sort of the next dimensional equivalent of the triangle or tetrahedron. We created a tetrahedron by adding another point above the triangle and connecting all the sides. In the same way, we create a four simplex by adding another point above in the fourth dimension, the tetrahedron and connecting all the sides. Again, I don't really know what this looks like. It's going to be something like, I don't know, this. This has five sides and the sides are all tetrahedron. The rest of these, I'm not even going to try to draw, but I'll tell you what they are. This one is made out of 16 tetrahedra. This one is made out of 24 octahedra. This one is my personal favorite. It's made out of 120 dodecahedra. Some people call this the dodecaplex. And last but certainly not least, this one is made out of 600 tetrahedra. And these are all of the polychora, all of the four-dimensional regular polytopes. Ready for dimension five? I'm not even going to pretend to draw any of these. I'm just going to tell you what they are. There's the next dimensional equivalent of the triangle, and this one is made out of six of these. There's the next dimensional equivalent of the cube, which is made out of 10 of these. And then there's this one, which is made out of 32 of these. And that's actually it for dimension five. Those are the only ones that you can do. Let's do one more dimension because that's all that's going to fit on my page. So we're up to two, three, four, five. Now we're in the sixth dimension. This one is made out of seven of these. This one is made out of 12 of these. And this one is made out of 64 of these. And those are the only ones that exist. Now this is kind of a weird result, but it turns out that in every dimension after the fourth, there are exactly three regular polytopes. No matter how far you go, there are always going to be exactly three. And in fact, it's always these three. There's always a sort of equivalent of the triangle or tetrahedron, an equivalent of the square or cube, and then one here that's kind of like the octahedron where it's made out of the previous level's triangle version, but there's a lot more of them. This to me is one of the weirdest results in all of math because the question we're asking here is pretty straightforward. Definitely we set the rules. We were the ones who decided what it takes to count as a regular shape, a regular polytope. But once you set those rules, the answer of how many there are for each dimension is actually already set in stone. And it's just up to us as mathematicians to go find out what it is and prove it. The fact that just somehow in the nature of the universe, the number of polytopes in each dimension is one, one, infinity, five, six, three, 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 three. That's one of those things that just makes me feel like the universe is super wacky and bizarre. So that's all I have for you today. If you're interested in this, you should definitely Google the word polytopes. You should even try YouTube searching it because there are a lot of cool videos that people made where they rotate four and five dimensional shapes through space and you kind of get to see different projections of them. There's a little bit about polytopes in my book. Remember to pre-order. And if you like these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, post notifications. We're gonna have new videos every Tuesday. And why don't you share this video? with a friend of yours who likes math or with someone who doesn't know they like math. That's all. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.